real estate related cannabis survey is kind of eye opening. We're going to get to that along with um, a story about Maryland lawmakers now dealing with what to do about prior convictions. And our buddy Andrew has more cannabis by the numbers, and this is interesting stuff, so you're going to want to listen to that. Um, but first, uh, hello, everybody. You know, that's that's today's But First. How you doing? Glad you're all here to join us for another episode of Vote Pro Podcast. How's everybody doing over there? I'm not doing too good. Today I was going to go by the dispensary and I realized my friggin' card expired. Oh! Oh, man. Yeah, mine expired that, that's, a while that's back, That's exactly too. what I said. Oh! Man, it cost, in Virginia, it cost $200 to right. renew. So I got to pay $200 for the right to spend way too much money on weed. It's ridiculous. <laughs> God. You to do it legally. You know? What's <laughs> wait, it in wait, Maryland? Wait. Well, actually, you know, I, I'm on a, a bunch of medications after I, my surgery, and mm -hmm. uh, so one of them, I have to go in every month and see the doctor to get it renewed. Oh, really? Uh, and yeah. my insurance pays for that for that office visit. Mm -hmm. But if it didn't, man, it'd be a lot more than 200 mm -hmm. bucks a month. Uh, yeah, I mean, a yeah. year. A year, yeah, I mean, yeah. so. And that's just, and that's for, uh, but that was for an, an opiate. Well, listen to me complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Weed is no, illegal. Right, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know they finally made it legal, but you know, uh, it's I, just I, I the really government. Think, God damn! I know I, I'm a I'm a broken clock. Wait, here's but, what happened: God. I was at a traffic light today, yeah, you know, and I looked over and on the side of the road. They had you know those little you know signs in the grass that say you know chiropractor, you know little league teams forming, and another one was renew your marijuana card. So I'm sitting there going, and I just, you know, like the hour before, I realized that it had it expired. So I picked up my phone, and I did the intersection, and I just, and I called it. And it was this doctor's office, and the, and the recording was kept on going on about, you know, COVID, you know, tests right, and vaccines right, and all right. shit that shit that they did and all that. And, and so then finally, you know, someone got, uh, you know, on the phone, and uh, and I asked him, and, and I said, how much is it to renew? And she goes, 45 bucks. What? Yeah. Wow. That's nice. That's great, right, man. It was two, so it's it was, down from two hundred down to what was it one fifty last time? I it was one fifty. Yeah, you know what I yeah. think it is is a lot. A lot of us are just going fuck it. And I think some people are going, you know, fuck it. You know, I like, like especially if it's like you know a husband and wife. Why do both of us need cards? Yeah, yeah. For, right. Why spend you know? five hundred yeah. bucks so we can go right. buy weed yeah. that's yeah. way too right? Just see how much more weed. How much more weed we could buy if only one of us has a card. <laughs> There's a group of Maryland lawmakers who are getting together to discuss a process for legalizing cannabis in our state. And, and they're dealing with the issue of what to do about the prior convictions. Now, um, there, there's three things that they could do. Um, one is expungement. That's just completely right. removing the case from the police and court records like it never happened. Then there's something called shielding, keeping records of a conviction from public view. I mean, the police mm -hmm. and the court were still right. have it, but an employer wouldn't get it, for example. Gotcha. And sealing, which is preventing access for anybody to these conviction records unless you have a court order. And a judge has to come up with a compelling reason to give the, comport, the, the court order. Um, but the, the, the thing that's, that is... Uh, challenging about this whole thing. According to Maryland District Court Chief Judge John P. Morrissey, he said that whichever route you take is going to be extremely labor-intensive and going to require all kinds of manual mm. efforts. And he's talking about hundreds of additional, you know, Employees? bureaucrats, clerks. Yeah, sure. Over a period of several years, no matter which way they do it. Yeah, it's so a lot this of work. Is, I mean, it's a lot of work. It's just not well, as easy as well, it what sounds. A, well, what about, well, last week I mentioned, uh, I, my, I gave kudos to the state legislature. Right, you did. Because At the last, end of the summer, show. last summer, in a, in, over the summer, they expunged, like, what was it, 600,000 people? Yeah, they did. Right. How can they do 600,000 people in two months in Maryland? It's going to take them years to do how many people? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. And no that is a good question. Answer. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, Maybe we need, to that call, we need to call New Jersey and ask them how they yeah. did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some you know, the, I mean, and if, and if that's what Maryland is trying to do is look at best case scenarios and try to come up with a, uh, you know, with the best practices for these things, um, 
Maybe they need to talk to New That's Jersey. That's a good way to go. Talk to Jersey. And, and wow. also, at this, at this point, if you're an employer and you're going to hire someone, you ask them if they've been arrested and go, you know, I got a record for possession of, you know, two joints when I was when I was in college. You know, yeah, you would I think, think most people are going to go, oh, fuck that. Uh, you know? That's I mean, true. Have you, ever, have you ever done anything really bad is what I'm asking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You might think that, Andrew, but you'd be surprised. I mean. Well, uh, like right now, if you do any kind of f- business with the federal government, Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, your, your hands, yeah. you know, in some ways, your hands and are tied. And let's face it, in our area, who doesn't? Right. I don't care what that's business right. you are. You're either... Well, around here, yeah, that's true. You know, if you're in well, business yeah. around here, you're, you're dealing with some level of government. This is Cannabis by the Numbers, as, as written by Maryland Leaf Magazine, they, which is a very nice periodical that uh, you pick up free at the local dispensaries. What can I say? I like paper. You, you like the tactile experience. Yes, yes, yes. But this is, uh, anyway, this is little, all this from August. Anyway, five Democratic senators, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Ron Wyden from Oregon, and Cory Booker from New Jersey are sponsoring the new federal legalization bill. Wait a minute. That was three. That was only three. That wasn't five. Yeah, but there's five more, but they didn't listen. There's oh, three more. There's five. Okay. <laughs> Five, including those False three. advertising. Including those three. Yeah, the yeah. other three is like, who gets a fuck about them? <laughs> Somebody anyway, didn't proofread yeah. that article. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's just by the numbers. Okay, 16 grams of cannabis extract is now allowed under the new Mexico uh, adult use legalization law. Hmm. 16 grams. All righty. Of extract. That's a oh, wow. lot of friggin' lot extract. Of, yeah, yeah, that is. is. Man, that is, yeah. you know. Yeah, your vape cartridge is usually, is usually about a half a gram. Right, Half gra- or a gram, yeah, or, or yeah. a gram, or a right. gram, yeah. That's it, you're right. In other words, that's a you lie. don't need to be. I mean, yeah, you know, if you're just taking what you need, for, even for the weekend or a week, <laughs> right. come on, you don't need sixteen yeah. grams. No. Uh, maybe some people do. But, you know, um, I'm just. <laughs> I, I could that's a lot that, of man. That's a lot, a lot of cards you just stuck down, man. I mean, especially some of that stuff. It's like you know, you take a like a, something the size of a grain of rice, and right. you put that in your pipe and smoke that, and the, the back. The back of your head sort of goes, you know, bulges out a little bit. <laughs> now you use vapes, right, Andrew? Yes, I do. And and how long does a, a half gram cart last you? A couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> I should not have set you up like that. Yeah, it's like a it's softball. like a rake in the grass and boom, you know. <laughs> no, no, you know, actually I have only ever finished like one or two vape carts. I have what it's like the 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 21st century box of roaches, which are now yeah, little, right. little, little, yeah. little vape, yeah. va- vape cartridges that has like, you know, just, just a little so bit if left. You ever, if yeah. you ever really need some, you could you could get a few hits yeah. out of that. Right, right. right. Well, yeah. now that my card ran out, I was, I was sort of thinking about that. Matter of fact, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to probably scrape all the keef out of my grinder. Yeah, right. I just thought about that. There's probably nothing there to keep me going for a couple of days. Okay, twenty percent of Czech Republic citizens aged fifteen to thirty-four admit trying cannabis at least once. Now, I have a problem with the, with these, you know, especially remember when we were in high school, they were saying how many, what percentage of teenage, you know, high school teenagers say they smoke weed. Right. And I can remember one time they gave us one of those little, you know, Surveys. questionnaires. Oh, yeah. this is anonymous, you know. I'm looking yeah. around going. There's like 16 people in this class. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 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 Something you, you tell me they can't figure out who's right, <laughs> especially when we write, you know, I ain't answering our zip that. code or something. Hey. He was looking at my fucking <laughs> handwriting. You know, so I can remember. We no, I don't smoke no. that stuff. You know, <laughs> and, uh, never touch it. Never right, touch so it. So I have a feeling. Uh, That's so illegal, they, you know. Right. So when they say you know 20 percent admit to it, yeah. It's probably more like, you know, 50% actually do it. You're right. Underreported. Right. 76% of the St. Regis Mohawk tribe in New York voted to allow cannabis use for adults. Now, I think this is great. All these, um, all these, uh, this is the second one I did. Remember, I did something about the, mm-hmm. uh, that in Arizona tribe. That's right. And, and, um, you know, they're all legalizing cannabis, man. I think it's about time. Smoke yeah. a peace pipe, baby. Yeah, man. Yeah, the and, uh, and that's probably an accurate number because you can you can count voter rolls. Yeah, in seventy six. That's a nice percentage. That's a pretty I mean, that's damn a huge good big number. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that means twenty four percent probably didn't take you know for you know never felt didn't answer the question or something. Mm-hmm. Well, so I think more power to it. And now this is in New York, so I guess isn't that great? You can go to casinos and smoke weed, man. That's <laughs> isn't that nice? Awesome. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's that's a win win right there. The <laughs> right, casino, man, we, the weed. 
awesome. Right, right. <laughs> I wonder, man, that'd be great if you go like one of those, uh, they, they have some of those slot games where you can win a prize and have the prize be like, you know, half a pound of like great weed. <laughs> 12,000 years ago in China, cannabis was first domesticated by humans, according to a new study. A study? Uh, they studied yeah, humans study. from 12,000 years ago? Right, yeah, well, yeah. But we've done a couple of stories about that. Yeah, we, we have. They, we well, have. But, but we've yeah. never gone back 12,000 years, I don't think. That's well, uh, yeah, we did. history. I did it depends one, on how good the weed you? is you're smoking. <laughs> well, yeah. That yeah, can send me they, forward in time 12,000 years. Yeah, I don't we know did a story about how, yeah, about how uh, hemp was the first domesticated plant like 12,000 years ago or so. Right, oh, but, okay. what they, but, but they found a guy... With he had like three quarters of a pound Oof. of sensimian, so it was it was right, like unfertilized right. female buds. Right, right. And that was in his sack. That, no that, he was, that, that he was that's buried. Dope. And it was buried, and that's what they found in China. And yeah. and I, what I like, I did a story about that last year. And what I liked was the uh, anthropologist or the archaeologist. It's just they they said that the cannabis lost its smell and flavor. And I can remember thinking, <laughs> how do you know well, of the flavor unless you like smoke some, you know? Yeah, I was going to say. Right. That's and right. Then, and then I'm thinking, these guys found three quarters of a pound. That's a lot of weed. That's They're probably weed. going, who the fuck's going to miss a joint or yeah, two? Right. You know, they, <laughs> they, who my, knows? They my, probably, my, they probably, it was probably a pound and a half. And they only said, yeah, hey, only three quarters of a pound. Three quarters of a pound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. $245 million dollars will be generated by the New York State marijuana industry by 2024, according to the governor's office. Again, you know... I think that's um, a low estimate. Right, because yeah. I remember yeah. there's one estimate that said the, the illegal cannabis market in New York City is $1 billion a year. Right. I believe that. Right. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, at least when I lived there, when I left, it might have gone down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but but legal uh, illegal uh, in weed in New York City is going to be a lot more than... You know, it's got to be closer to a billion than, a, I would than a couple million, I would think, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll I don't see. know, man. We'll see. Well, man, is you're gonna, I, you I guess it depends buying. on how the law turns out. Right. And also, you're not going to be paying a tax, a luxury tax for recreational. And also, a lot of those people, they've been buying from the same delivery guy for years. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like... So you know, are they, are they necessarily going to suddenly cut their guy loose? No, Maybe I've talked not. to some people about this. Matter of fact, you know... What, okay, before it was it was medical marijuana in Maryland, everybody bought their weed. They had a guy, you know, a guy yes. or girl, I guess. I, you know, I'm not saying a person. Know, they had a person where they could, you know, they bought their their weed from. And for me, it was a guy that we've known. I've, I've known since junior high school. I mean, you know, and yeah. um, and and then all of a sudden, when I got my car, to, I felt like uh, I was like you know, ghost of my old girlfriend or something. Yeah. You know? I it was so Jay, like, right? Was it Jay? No, 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 no. no but I, I, I try to like every couple of months call him, just say hi, because I don't want her to think the only reason they all yeah, same like, friends like with a breakup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you flowers, know, business is business. You know. Yeah, yeah no, I wonder, how, wonder, but wonder how that's going across the country. Yeah, it's got to be weird. Well, you know, yeah. those guys and women who are selling it, they're in the same boat. They're buying it. I got their card. They're like, fuck it. You know, I have one more. Three is the number of idiots that do a podcast once a week. But, uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> All right, here's a survey. And this is a real estate survey. A survey published Monday by real estate brokerage firm Redfin found that 46% of respondents would either prefer to live or will only live in a place where cannabis is legalized. Broadly, isn't that interesting? That is. Oh, I, 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 I wouldn't move somewhere where it's no, illegal. I wouldn't either. So almost half of the population now says that I will not move. Like if I'm retiring or if I'm moving out of state or I'm moving somewhere, I'm not moving somewhere that doesn't have weed. Almost half the people are saying that. That's yeah. That shocked me. I mean, that's a lot. That's yep. really well, over half the population of the United States live you know, live in a state where right. where, where uh, medical marijuana is legal. Yeah, to a certain degree, but there's so many me medical marijuana programs that are just shit. Another 32 percent of the survey respondents said they didn't care whether cannabis was legal or not when deciding where to live. So a third don't, but a half do. Redfin's poll found 34 percent of respondents, the highest majority, preferred to live where cannabis for adult use is no longer prohibited. 12 percent of those polled said they would only live in a place where cannabis was fully legal. 
Just 10% of the 1,023 survey takers said they would not live in a place where cannabis is legal, with 12% saying they would prefer not to. So there you go. Yeah, and and once again, we see that the, the cannabis issue is a microcosm of a, a larger political uh, principle here. And this time, it's it's involving people voting with their feet, you know? People, if you don't like their the laws, voting with their wallets, voting with their feet. But in terms of, you know, if, weed, if yeah. I don't right. like the law where I live, I can See move you. somewhere else where I like yeah. it. Right. Right. You know, and people do that. And that's kind of the beauty of the of the federal system that we have. You People can vote with their feet. Yep. And, and, and they they can either participate or not participate, depending on what they feel. Right. And well, uh, that, that works for state and local local issues. All but, kinds of issues, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, but if you want to get away from federal issues, you're going to leave the country. Yeah. True, true. And and I'm uh, not prepared to do that just yet. <laughs> nope, but, not uh, yet. <laughs> but, uh, not ever weed, that's for so, sure. So I, I can maybe, uh, I'll just have to vote with my hand on that one. So mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all right, it'd be cool to live in a boat. You can, you know, just... Yeah, just go out into in international marina, waters. If you don't like it, yeah, really. You could actually be... <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about this. What's the difference between a a um, anarchist and a um, libertarian? An anarchist, um, I would think, doesn't want any form of government whatsoever. A libertarian just wants the government to do a few things, do them well, and then stay, stay the back. hell out of our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was an anarchist... I would be for abolishing the Constitution, because the Constitution is the charter for our form of government. Uh, I mean, theoretically, right. but mm-hmm. but as a as a libertarian, I wouldn't want that. Right. right. But I think the modern day anarchist doesn't try to change the 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 country. They just say, "Screw it, where well, I'm out of here," and yeah. they go live on their they own. Just go off, off the, the grid. grid. Right. Go <laughs> off the grid. <laughs> And Pay no taxes, the, don't right. work. Yeah. Voting, I don't know, some people, some people do. Voting with live, their feet. Live right. in international waters. Live in national. Yeah. Water. There's something mm-hmm. that I call that I've heard about. I've read that I'm fascinated by. It's called seasteading, like homesteading. Yeah. So you try to find that. a place and you uh, and you basically you've built your own little little town floating on the water somewhere. Uh-huh. Uh, now there's going to be many. I mean, you could do it, you know, reasonably, or yeah. you could spend billions uh, of dollars anyway. I'm going to pass on that one, but okay. Um, <laughs> okay. We have some stuff going on around the country. Um, what's going on in Ohio? You Mr. know, Britain. this has kind of uh, jumped out at me, um, and I'm seeing this more and more. And I saw an article, which I didn't pull up for today, about uh, 15 Republican uh, Congress people who are forwarding legislation in their states for pro-cannabis. And here's a specific case in Ohio. A conservative Ohio lawmaker is currently seeking sponsors for a bill to legalize cannabis for adults in the state, the Associated Press reports. The yeah, bill baby. being circulated by Republican Jame, uh, Republican Representative Jamie Callender would allow sales and possession for adults 21 and older and levy a 10% tax on retail sales. I like 10. That's not too bad. 10's not too bad. Calendar describes the legislation as, quote, the responsible approach for the adult use, unquote. Under the proposal, a quarter of the cannabis-derived tax revenues would fund police department purchases for equipment used to detect impaired drivers, and another quarter would be used for addiction and recovery programs. The remaining half would uh, not be earmarked, allowing the funds to be used by Ohio during a uh, precarious economic time calendar told the AP. So that's one example of Republicans. You're always talking, Phil, about how we really need to turn over the Republicans because the Democrats really are do. pretty much on our side, luckily. Yeah. But uh, there's an example, and we're seeing it more and more. And what I think this defines is that in, in many cases, the Republicans look at it a little differently, I would say, and this is generalizing, but often they're looking at it from an economic standpoint. How do I raise money in my state? How do I uh, allocate those funds? How do I make it fair? And I think more often the Democrats tend to look at other, I mean, they look at that as well, but they're more socially conscious. They're more interested in 
um, you know, social equity and some of that stuff, which is great. But that does often add a lot of cost and bureaucracy to the programs, good or bad. But uh, anyway, so there we go. That's good news. And, yeah. and uh, you know, as I've said many times, the, uh, uh, the, the legalization effort is really, when you come right down to it, very much a conservative or libertarian uh, cause. So it's good that these folks are getting past the old, you know, war on drugs mentality. And well, we still and, got plenty of those, especially in the, the South. There, far still, too many of those, and way, uh, way too many. But of, but uh, you know, we start with a trickle and and hopefully a, a flood. Well, and I ensue. think you're going to see more and more of it, don't you? Because so many of these lawmakers on both sides, but again, the Republicans are the ones we need to come on our side. They're starting to see that all these states now are doing this, and many of them have the adult use, and it's like, well, these states aren't falling apart. Crime isn't rampant. Kids aren't dropping out of school. And my God, they're raising a lot of money. <laughs> so, you yeah. know. And, they, I, and, and that's going to be, you know, part of what convinces a lot of people. Now, I also heard, and I don't, I didn't find the article, but apparently there is a group of like 10 congressmen um, who are Republicans who are um, moving towards, you know, uh, uh, supporting legalization effort in Congress. So Yeah, that's uh, the article I saw too, Phil, and I, I couldn't find it right before we went on. But yeah, well, don't, think, don't you think with public opinion has changed, has it's flip-flopped. It used to yeah, be a right, minority yeah, one, and now it's the majority of people. And you're if you right. want to stay in office, you got to appeal to the majority. Yeah. You would think. No it's it's, it's simple on. math. And now, but what it, what it boils down to is where you live. That's right. It's not a majority certain, everywhere. Everywhere. Exactly. So I think it's sort of, you got to figure out where, what parts of the country. That's right. Yeah, but what's what's amazing is, you know, places like, you know, uh, Oklahoma and Alabama and Mississippi are all talking, you know. South Dakota now? Right. Yeah, South, yeah. Dakota, South Dakota? South Dakota. Yeah. Nebraska a is talking, right, doing Nebraska? a medical thing. What yeah. the hell? Man, you know, man, these are like red, 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 red states. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they yeah. really are. The other thing is that, uh, you know, that that whole what about the children thing is starting to evaporate uh, uh yet yeah, another you hear that less and less yet right. another federal study now we've had what have we had so far uh the journal of american medical association the national institute on drug abuse the national center for education statistics what else uh centers for disease control and prevention all saying all coming out with studies that say that teen use has not increased as a result of legislation. Well, we have another one. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, which is a, 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 a executive branch uh, agency, found that the, the past year use among teens 20 to 12 to 17 mm -hmm. fell from 13 to uh, 10 percent. Uh, between 2019 and 2020, so it's wow. not just not that it's not going up; it's going down. And this is well, nationwide. I think part. I, do you think part of that might be because it's just harder for them to get now? Because it's if it's legal to get, that's a good point. Yeah, the black market guys, especially the the young kids, man, you know, their sources are drying up. Yes, but if that's true, that's a good development, right? Right. Yeah, right. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. absolutely. Right. That's what we always said: you legalize, and the black market's going to you know, decrease. I mean. They, People only spend, they're spending X amount of money on weed. That's right. It's a right? finite amount. That's right. Finite amount, a definite amount. So the more they buy illegally, the less they're going to buy illegally. It only stands to reason. Uh, I just read an article today about how the, still you cannot have a medical card in Virginia and a gun. And I just think this is an issue that with the Republicans, especially now, you know, becoming more and more in favor of cannabis uh, and they're also in and favor gun of, rights yeah. and gun rights i think yeah. that they i think maybe the republicans should step up to the plate and fix this yeah. I, I agree you know? and 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 that's that, that we you shouldn't have to make a choice right a, and uh you know i i think that's a, a, a it's going to take some time but i think that's a an item whose uh, an idea whose time will right. come i know and, a guy and i'll it, tell you in my, in my life i'm sorry jay but in my life i definitely can see Alcohol is a source of causing more violence, and probably people have done crazy shit with guns when they were drunk more than stone. Oh, Absolutely. I don't well, doubt that for a second. I, I can just tell you, being a Virginian, I know of two people at least that I've talked to and said, "Why don't you just get your card?" And they're be because they're gun people because you know, they, they have guns. Right. And I know so, people in Maryland don't do it either. 
Do you? Is, is it Maryland yeah. the same thing? You can't. Same uh, thing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a federal thing because when oh. the law, when you buy a permit, there, there's a federal form you have to oh, fill out. I forgot right. what number okay. it is. Whatever it is. I got you. It says it. Do you do you have a do you do medical marijuana? Oh, gotcha. And if you lie on it. Oh, and so it's catch, not a state uh, thing. It's a, it's a federal. It's part it's of the federal, federal thing. Yeah. It's part of Schedule then, One. I see. Right. I and if you that. can't pass the federal form, the state can't issue you the permit, gotcha. which makes sense. Yeah, but I didn't if know you're that. a chronic alcoholic and want to play it's with fine. guns, I think that should be a little bit more <laughs> yeah, of a red flag. An eyelash for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen. <laughs> we're uh, closing out here. Let me do this quick. I got a weed quiz for you. It has to do with uh, actors. Um, so here's the question. I got an A, B, a C, and a D. You guys are going to pick. We're going to see who gets it right. Which which famous actor was arrested and charged with smoking marijuana in a midnight police raid at a 20-year-old starlet's Los Angeles home on September 4, 1st in 1949? Was it A, Vincent Price? Was it B, Robert Mitchum? Was it C, Marlon Brando? Or was it D, William Holden? Which one of those guys got busted? And, and I'm going to go with Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando? Okay. I'm going with Robert Mitchum. Now, You're how old go with, was this starlet? 20 years 20. old. 20 years old. That's and what, the cops raided a party because they were smoking weed, and this gentleman was arrested, and he spent some time in jail. And convicted for smoking cannabis. What they call marijuana. It marijuana. The answer you say Robert is Mitchum? Yep. B, Robert Mitchum. Well done, oh, Andrew. How did well, you know nice that, job. Man? How did you know that? Was that a guess? Actually, I, I kind of knew it. Oh, okay. Well, these oh. young people <laughs> listen. I read, somewhere that, I read somewhere that he had been arrested for marijuana. Okay. Well, the young I people in this that. show have no idea who any of those people are. So anyway. Well, so right, well think, you know. I, I wasn't born when the Marx Brothers were famous, but I know who true. they are. So. That's true. Well, folks, thanks once again for joining us today. We had a wonderful time. I had a lot of fun. Hope you did, too. Um, if so, do us a favor. Go on to Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star rating. Tell a friend about us. And contact us if you have anything at all you'd like to say. And Jay's going to tell you just how to do that. We can receive your emails at podcast at votepropot.com. Send us an email. Let us know what you think of the show. Give us ideas. Andrew, what do you got? Yeah, we uh, try to uh, share as much as we can about the whole cannabis industry and politics on our social networking platform because we can't possibly cover it all here on our podcast here. So if you want to add some, we would love to hear what we have to say and make some comments, uh, share some uh, information, some articles maybe, or, or just, you know, something funny. So go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter and just do a search for Vote Pro Pot.